Um, welcome. Appreciate you guys coming. Um, it's amazing. It's uh, you know first uh, week of June. Uh, what is this? November already. Um, and the weather's still nice. You know, we were able to go out and practice uh, last night. And um, not sure how many more practices we'll get outside here in November. But it's really nice to be able to continue to get that here late in the season. I'll start just giving a, a quick recap of Indiana. You know, the things that we saw uh, from watching the film. Um, you know, I'll start with the defense, and uh, you guys will think I'm crazy, but uh, you know, stats don't tell the true story uh, of the defensive uh, performance uh, in that game, in my opinion. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Indiana is a, an offense that can run the football. Uh, they had run the football uh, exceptionally well the week before. Uh, I thought it was one of our best defensive efforts in terms of stopping the run. Uh, 44 attempts uh, that they had, uh, we let out two runs that were significant plays. Um, the first one was uh, when they were back in their little wildcat formation, and uh, it's a play that we repped a lot. Uh, didn't uh, execute the call uh, the way we needed to, and it got out the gate. Uh, the rest of the game, that uh, little set really didn't have uh, much production, and that's the way we'd planned it uh, going into the game. It just didn't work out on that one particular play, and then they got another play late in the game. But I thought uh, overall our front seven uh, with the D-line and especially the linebackers, um, I thought the linebackers played their best game of the year uh, against Indiana. So really pleased with that. I think they probably they played faster. They were more aggressive. Uh, they were healthier. Uh, it was one of the biggest uh, uh, contributors to that success. But I uh, was really pleased with what I saw, not only out of our D-line, but our linebackers uh, specifically. Uh, when you look at the pass yards, you know you get concerned. Uh, obviously, when you have that many yards allowed, you try to figure out what happened. Uh, when, you, when you play the run the way we needed to play the run, you're going to put your DBs in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Uh, and a lot of those yards came in the first half when they were able to uh, efficiently throw and catch fade balls um, or we got pass interference calls. And, you know, uh, basically what a lot of teams do is uh, when you're in tight one-on-one -on -one coverage, they throw it up and they hope uh, that their guy can go get it uh, or they can draw per, you know, a, a pass interference call. And uh, unfortunately, uh, that happened uh, most of the time uh, going into the game when you watch uh, teams that do that, uh, those are called 50-50 balls. You hope to win 50% of them, and if they win 50% of them, you know, you, you're going to be okay. We didn't win 50% of them. That's uh, where it got bad, especially in the first half. And uh, would not have anticipated that happening. Um, I thought Isaiah Wharton had been playing pretty consistently uh, for us and been playing well, and unfortunately he was uh, on the, the losing end of a lot of those one-on-one -on -one battles. Um, he's our guy. He'll uh, continue to work and get better, and uh, you know, we're, we'll, we will work with him on finishing you know, some of those uh, plays better. But I'll give Indiana credit. Uh, they threw and caught those uh, balls exceptionally well, uh, and they did it consistently um, there throughout the game. Uh, encouraging thing uh, for me when I look at that uh, defensive effort of the guys that the 11 guys that were out there on the field playing most of the time, uh, nine of those 11 will be back for next year. Uh, we'll lose JPO and Darius Hamilton. Anthony Chaffee is another one that plays a lot, but Kai Hester played for Anthony uh, a lot in that game. And when you look at uh, those 11 players out there, nine of those 11 will be coming back. And uh, when I see the effort that uh, you know most of those guys were able to put forth in the production they had on Saturday, that's very encouraging. Uh, as we move forward, if we can build on what we did, it's it's just if we just played one game like that, you know, and uh, with our front seven, and we don't build on it, it doesn't mean much. But if we can build on it, um, it, it'll look a lot better in the future. You know, the other thing about the defense that I was excited about, we got three takeaways. We have not had a game with takeaways like that. Got three takeaways. Uh, I don't know. Everyone thinks the block kicks are special teams, but those are defensive clips. Uh, those are defensive reps. You know, it's a defense that goes out and uh, blocked the extra point. It was a defense that went out and blocked the field goal. Uh, when you can get three takeaways like we did and we can block two kicks on defense, uh, that's saying a lot about the guys' effort. And uh, I'm really pleased with that. Offensively, um, you know, first half, I thought we moved the ball well. Um, not great, but I thought we moved it well. Uh, good enough to give us an opportunity to go into halftime like we did with the lead. Third quarter, we, we really struggled. Uh, we had seven straight three and outs there in the second half and uh, didn't use much time off the clock and kept going back out on the field on defense. Um, their D-line uh, was stuffing the run on the inside, and uh, we were struggling to pick up uh, their movement and pressures to protect the quarterback the way we needed to to uh, be able to move the ball. But when you look at the seven straight three and outs in the second half and then one of 16 on third down, that tells a story of uh, the game you know, offensively. And uh, we've got to be better. That's just a little discouraging. Um, 
based on what we had done at Minnesota to come back and not to build on that and, and uh, continue to improve on that performance at Minnesota. We got to get back to that. It's no different like I talked about on defense. If we don't follow up and build on what we did, um, you know, last couple weeks defensively, I think we've gotten better. If we take a step back, it, it, uh, it, it'll be discouraging. And, and I kind of felt like we did that in the Indiana game coming out of the Minnesota game. Special teams wise, still have to be cleaner. Um, we missed a field goal that would have been critical. Uh, kicked the ball out of bounds, had a punt blocked. Uh, just you can't do those things, and we have to get better uh, in that area. We invest an insane amount of meeting time, walk through time, and practice time, and uh, unfortunately, we're, we're uh, having a breakdown in uh, a few units, a few units each game, and it's a different unit, it's a different player, um, but we've got to get it cleaned up. Uh, that's just uh, kind of a recap of the Indiana game. Um, from there, just talking uh, about Michigan State. Um, Tremendous respect for this program. Uh, I know they've got a two and seven record, but when you watch film, that's not what you see. Um, there's uh, a lot of good players out on that field in offense and defense. There's a lot of seniors uh, on that offense that have been around for a long time, played a lot of games, um, been around a lot of success. And for whatever reason, it just uh, hasn't gone the way they probably wanted it to, but there's still a lot of good players. Uh, defensively, the same thing. Um, have uh, been able to coach against Michigan State several different times and have had some really tough, uh, really hard fought games all the way back uh, to when I was at Wisconsin. Uh, played them in the, the first uh, Big Ten Championship game and it was one of, the, you know, one of the best games I've been a part of, you know, going back and forth. But uh, have a tremendous amount of respect for the program. You know, Coach D'Antonio and his staff do an outstanding job. And um, regardless of what the record is, uh, we have to have a great week of preparation. We have to go play an outstanding game. Uh, to put ourselves in position to have a chance to win it um, you know, when we go up there to East Lansing. Uh, so with that being said, I'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Chris, you mentioned uh, special teams. How much is starting field position on both sides of the ball hurting you guys, whether it be punt, kickoffs for the other team, and then you get? Battle of field position. How That's much? what special teams is. Um, when you look at uh, you know, our starting field position, um, on offense and defense, it's not where it needs to be. It's not where you'd want it to be. Um, obviously, the better starting field position on both uh, um, sides of the ball. Offensively, it's fewer yards to go to get points, and defensively, it's more yards for them to or to, to be able to get to, to score points. And it's not where we need to be. And uh, when you look at uh, even further into um, those stats, you know, uh, Saturday I thought it was one of our best kickoff cover performances but yet the still the starting field position was not great uh, we were you know they were fielding the kicks um, you know out on the 12 yard line 16 yard line you know getting a 14 yard return now you're out by the 30 yard line that's not where you want to start and um, you know the, the kick return uh, average was not great but uh, the starting field position uh, was and, and that's what it's all about it's not about you know uh, the kickoff return average or punt return average, you know, it's it's where you, you start the ball, where you put it down and give yourself a chance to line up and play football. And uh, we're not good enough in that area. Does uh, Michigan State remind you of, of yourself and uh, your, your program in some ways just because they've been so close with Illinois, Northwestern, Indiana? They've been right there with some of these games and they just haven't been able to find a way to win? Uh, no, I think it's completely different. You were, we're in year one and they're in year whatever, you know. They're a team that just came off a national playoff. You know, we're not. Uh, so it is completely different from from that standpoint. Uh, if you want to just look at this year and the, some of the close games, yeah, you could probably say there's similarities, but uh, um, that there are a lot of differences too. Coach, you mentioned Chaffee and Hester. What's your plan for this week as far as who you're you're going to start and give more reps to? Uh, we'll see how the week goes. I mean, Chaffee's been our starting strong safety. Chaffee has had some injury issues uh, that have come up uh, that's limited him in practice. Uh, Hurt him a little bit in this last game. You know, that's why Kai played more and Kai came back and was healthy. Um, so we, we really will have uh, a three-man rotation. That's what we, we like to go through uh, at safety with Saquon, with uh, um, Anthony, and with Kai. Uh, and they can play both positions. So it's not just a, it's a, a Kai, Hester, and Anthony Chaffee deal. It's a three-man rotation that, uh, regardless of what happens in, in a game, they can each uh, play those two positions. You guys, um, all right they, there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they've been. Uh, Tyler, I haven't seen you in a while. You haven't been around much. So I, I have not. <laughs> you, you, forget, you forget where you're at. Tyler O'Connor. Um, obviously, he's been splitting it a little bit, but um, 
you expect him to start, and what do you remember about him from last year? Because I guess he you know played against Ohio State. Yeah, I, I don't know who's going to start for him. Um, I know he got dinged up uh, last week, but um, he's a good player. You know, we played against him last year at Ohio State, and he did a nice job. And uh, um, he's he, he's done a nice job in the reps that he's taken. But I, I don't know who will start. The, the, the focus for this game is not about. You know, who's playing for Michigan State, what they're doing, it's all about ourselves, And uh, we've got to continue to get better ourselves. And that's where our focus at, is at. And like I mentioned on um, Saturday after the game, our focus isn't uh, just about getting wins. Our focus is about trying to go out and play a complete game in all three phases. And if we do that, the, the scoreboard will take care of itself. And that's really what our team is focused on and our coaching staff is focused on. Uh, uh, Chris. Uh, no, no, don't, don't argue here. Okay. One, one of them, you guys ask a question. Uh, Coach, uh, you just mentioned Saquon Hampton. Uh, you were raving about him uh, uh, in the preseason. Unfortunately, he suffered an injury earlier in the season. Uh, he played very well last game. Do you finally think he's coming into his own in this part of the season? Uh, I think Saquon has tremendous potential. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he hasn't been able to reach it this year because of the, pre the, the injury in the first game against Washington and the amount of time that he's missed. He's starting to get back into a groove, but he's nowhere near uh, the player that I think he will be uh, down the road. Will it be next year or two years from now? I don't know. The good thing is he's got a lot of years left, uh, but I think he's got potential to be an outstanding football player. I was hoping that it would get to he'd get closer to his potential this year through the course of the year. It just hasn't happened because of the injury. But uh, I love him. Uh, he's he's uh, one of my favorite guys. He's one of our favorite players, and uh, I think he's going to be a great player for us here uh, over the next few years. Uh, Chris, uh, JPO was talking after the game about how you know these guys. This team won't give up, and they, obviously they haven't given up. They've obviously been right to the end in the last two games. How encouraging, you know, in, the, in your first year in this program, is it to see that the that despite what's gone on, the effort has still been there? Uh, it's everything, you know. It's, it's everything to be honest with you, because that's again you talk about the stages of building a team. The first thing you want to, to be able to do is get your guys to compete consistently. Uh, from week to week and, and for four quarters uh, each week. And I can sit here and say, honestly, I see that happening. Uh, our players have competed every game. Our, co our players have competed uh, for four quarters uh, in the game. Uh, even though the scores may not necessarily reflect that, that's what's happened if you really watch the game. And uh, that says a lot about the, the players. It's not about me. It's about the players uh, and their investment, their commitment, and their love for each other. And that's what it's all about. And we've gotten a football team to compete. Now we've got to get our, our uh, whole program to execute better on Saturday. Chris, I think we all thought that the running backs would be the strength of this team at the start of the season. They've all, between the four of them, they only have one rushing touchdown. Uh, I know Martin was banged up. What do you expect from them over the la these last couple games? Is, will Martin be back? Hicks more involved? What, can, what more production can you get out of these guys? Uh, well, you, you guys all know this. Uh, running backs aren't any good unless they have people that block for them. Um, you know, you, you can look at the best running backs in the, in the, the game of football. Um, they're really good. Why? Uh, because they have outstanding offensive lines that block for them. Uh, our running backs, I think, are good running backs. Um, I think we have a good offensive line. Uh, we have struggled um, in certain games to put it all together uh, to be able to get the type of production that we want, especially when we get down in the red zone. Um, we need to do a better job of that. There's some games that we've run the ball exceptionally well, and the running backs get all the credit, but it's because we're able to block and create holes and do some, some things up front. And that's not only with our own line, that's our tight ends and that's our wide receivers uh, as well. Um, this last Saturday, that didn't happen the way we wanted it to. You know, Justin Goodwin had some really good production against Minnesota. I thought he had a solid game this last game, but not, but not a great one. Is that Justin's fault? Is that the O-line's fault? I think it's a combination of all the above. And uh, we need to, to continue to get that better. Um, not really better, we need to get it consistent is what we need to get it. Because we've had some games where we run the ball exceptionally well. We've had some times we've run the ball exceptionally well. But we've struggled to do it consistently. And, uh, that's kind of the, see, the theme of uh, the team, to be honest with you. Uh, that's not just the run game, that's the pass game, that's defense, that's special teams. Uh, there are times that we do things uh, and it, it, with our execution, our effort, and uh, all pieces of the puzzle uh, fitting together, and it looks pretty good. Uh, but it hasn't been consistent enough, and um, that's uh, the challenge that we all have is to get that to, to happen. Is that what it is? Tomorrow. Tomorrow is? Election Day. Um, Who are you voting for? <laughs>
Well, I, I should ask you. It would probably be a better headline. Should I just laugh back at you, too? <laughs> <laughs> Got to have a little fun in here, right? Do you encourage your players? Yeah, I, I enjoy playing with you a little bit. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, encourage your players? Do you put it under radar? Um, and then, obviously, with out-of-state players, I mean, do you, do you let them know ahead of time that you know, maybe you, you might want to get involved? I'll be honest with you. Um, we don't talk about politics a lot uh, here in the the program uh, in this team room. Uh, I do um, uh, stress that each player has their um, freedom of speech and uh, their their opinions, uh, but it's not something that we talk a lot about it uh, within team rooms and in our meeting rooms and, and things like that. Um, you know, uh, we're focused on, you know, our, our football team and, and going out and, and uh, trying to win games and be the best that we can be. But, uh, um, you know, whatever they uh, choose to do from a political standpoint, that, that's their, their own right. And they're, uh, they're, they're obviously uh, getting to have their own opinion, you know, and it's not something that I feel like, you know, we uh, should spend a lot of time on in here. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Take care, guys.